Speaker, as always, I very much appreciate the assistance of Mr. Engel in moving this resolution today to the House floor, and I commend Ms. Kelly, a new member of the committee, for her focus on this important issue. The Africa Subcommittee Chairman Chris Smith and ranking member of that committee, Karen Bass, have also done in-depth work on Nigeria and on Boko Haram in particular. I appreciate their, their travels to Nigeria. And Mr. Speaker, Nigeria holds a critical presidential election this weekend. It is, is, it's expected to be the con most consequential political event in years. Africa's most populous nation has over 70 million registered voters who will report to more than 100,000 polling stations. I had the opportunity with Don Payne uh, to lead a delegation years ago for uh, an election observer responsibility there for one of these national elections in Nigeria, and along with General Colin Powell at the time. And let me tell you, the political environment is always tense, but it's especially tense now. And the leading candidates, their neck and neck, as was the And I just uh, have to say that we have seen Nigeria transition from military rule to democracy in the election that uh, the General Powell and I witnessed. And that was a very peaceful, very peaceful time. But recent elections in Nigeria have seen political violence. And we are right to be concerned. And this resolution urges all political candidates to respect their pledges of nonviolence and insists that the government hold a free, fair, credible election, and that they do so on time. And this election date has already been postponed once. Meanwhile, Nigeria continues to face grave insecurity in the north at the hands of Boko Haram which loosely translates to Western education is sin. This Islamist terrorist organization indiscriminately kills in, in mass and pillages villages in their quest to establish a Sharia state. Satellite images document that after Boko Haram comes through, villages are literally wiped off the map. The group is responsible for 5,000 deaths last year in 2014 and displacing over a million people last year, and making this organization, by the way, one of the world's most deadly. But this weekend, forces fighting Boko Haram reported discovering another hundred bodies in a shallow mass grave. We don't really know how many they've killed out there in total, but we know that the killing continues. And after watching Boko Haram's violence, I wasn't surprised to see that that group pledges allegiance to ISIS. ISIS publicly accepted the overture, claiming this new relationship expands their self-declared caliphate in West Africa. At the same time, we've seen Boko Haram's propaganda increase in quality, mimicking the production of ISIS videos, sweeping what we call the virtual caliphate on the Internet. So the good news, Mr. Speaker, is that Nigeria's neighbors, Chad, Niger, Cameroon, They've all been making progress in the fight against Boko Haram under a newly established African Union regional force. They have rescued more than 30 northern Nigerian towns to date from, no, from Boko Haram and from that harsh rule. And this is a good beginning, but this African Union regional force lacks equipment and it lacks training. And this resolution expresses the House's support for robust security assistance to these troops in their fight against Boko Haram. Nevertheless, we cannot rely solely on other countries in the region. Nigeria's security forces should have the re lead role to play. If dismantling Boko Haram is the goal, we need a well-trained, well-equipped Nigerian military. We must make sure there are no impediments, legislative or otherwise, to providing this much-needed assistance. And I reserve the balance of my time, Mr. Speaker. The gentleman resumes.